Um, let's see, first thing. Um, if anyone, I just want, it's just, just, a, just a reminder. If anyone has been tasked with uh, giving a presentation as part of a document, um, be sure that they have that material uh, put in uh, 30 minutes prior uh, to the session uh, because they need that much time to get everything set up. So just remember that. I don't think, I don't think it affects many people, but I'm just reminding those that, that it might. Okay, first item up this afternoon is um, agenda item 4.2, drought management. It's a very short document. Um, there's not necessarily any action or decision required on our part, but that's up to the commission to, to decide. Um, and I'll ask uh, the secretariat to uh, introduce this document. Paul? Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Linz. Um, as, as pointed out, this is document 4.22, uh, drought management. It's a one-page document. Uh, basically, resolution 5 of uh, the Commission for Hydrology 14th session decided to work with the Commission for Climatology and the Commission on Agrometeorology on uh, drought management. Uh, on the aspects of drought prediction, uh, drought management, and as well uh, on the establishment of the uh, integrated drought management program. One of the major aspects of the integrated drought management program uh, was as well uh, uh, the setting up of its help desk. And uh, uh, the uh, help desk was basically uh, looking at the associated program on flood management help desk as, as a, an example of how to actually do that. And you will see at the bottom of the slide uh, that the um, uh, recent uh, uh, meetings of the um, in, uh, Integrated Drought Management Program's Advisory Committee and Management Committee uh, met in September of this year and uh, the management committee recommended combining its help desk with that of the associated program on flood management. So basically we will have a one window approach to looking at droughts uh, to floods. And, and you will recall the recent discussion we had on the help desk focusing as well on end-to-end -end early warning systems. So uh, the, the help desk will be uh, progressing uh, quite a bit in terms of its scope uh, and hopefully will provide good functionality and good access to members uh, from droughts to floods uh, for water management. The topic of drought management um, I don't think is explicitly mentioned um, so far in the future program. However, it is obviously linked to the thematic area of hydrological applications, products and services, which we will be covering in further discussions uh, later in the Commission meeting. Uh, organizationally, uh, the uh, uh, Integrated Drought Management Program has a, what we term, a technical support unit, uh, which is basically a, a, a part of the Secretariat uh, that, that assists uh, the program in its activities. And it's under the, under the WMO Agrometeorological Division, which literally is three doors down from my office. Uh, the chief of, of that division, uh, who's uh, a very good individual, is leading the effort of the technical support unit for, for uh, this effort. Um, one question uh, that uh, the document is posing uh, to the members um, is whether or not there is actually a concern uh, that being that it's given, uh, being led by the agrometeorological division, if you have witnessed that it is too slanted to agrometeorology and possibly not enough slanted to water resources management in general. And, and we don't mean that to be a leading question, 
Uh, it's simply a, a question that we ask because it's good to hear feedback from members if things are working well or if they're not working well. And if it happens to be working well, that's great. If it isn't working well, we'd like to know. Um, um, and, and I would like to turn actually to, to the President of the Commission for Hydrology, Dr. Linz, because um, under the constitution of the um, IDMP, uh, the advisory committee has on it three representatives, one from each of the three technical commissions. And Dr. Linz participates as President of the Commission on the advisory committee. And he could provide you, if you don't have personal experience on the IDMP, what his views are on how well things are functioning. And in, when we open the floor for, for comments, you could also raise your concerns or indicate that uh, if there's no concerns, that would be an indication that things are working well. Um, um, and so with there's that one paragraph, uh, 4.22, well, paragraph 4, let's call it, uh, where there's a statement at, at the end. Uh, <laughs> there's a statement. Okay, I won't lend you my glasses, they won't work. <laughs> we can ask someone from the, one of the members to pass their glasses to the president. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, uh, there's one, one comment uh, at the end of paragraph four which says the commission decided ways to ensure the provision of drought managed services from a hydrological perspective. We will modify that, that wording based on, on what we hear now in our discussion. So I'd like to turn it over to, to Dr. Lentz to provide his, his views as being a representative of the Commission uh, at those meetings and, and for uh, a number of meetings actually. Thanks Paul. Um, actually because of the, the synergy that exists um, with the Commission for Climatology, the Commission for Ag Meteorology, and the Commission for Hydrology all being under the, the Climate and Water Department that is all working for Johannes within the framework of the Secretariat. Um, we have really close communication uh, with, with, with that community. And my impression after several years now of being involved with the integrated drought management program and attending the meetings and participating with the individuals that are there is that um, you know the, I think the concerns that we have uh, from the standpoint of say hydrological drought um, are, are, are pretty well represented I, I honestly don't think uh, we we suffer in any way with not with not having our point of view on these things being taken into consideration um, the climate guys and the and the ag climate guys that are working in this area, um, they have a particular sensitivity to hydrological drought anyhow. So they they're pretty cognizant of what our concerns are. So at this point, I'm pretty comfortable that that we don't have any issue um, to concern ourselves with. In in that context, I would say that. It, it's conceivable that we could just look at uh, item 4.2, parent 2.4, and we could just drop the entire paragraph from my perspective. I just don't think it's a problem. But that's for you to decide. So uh, with that, by way of background, of, in terms of what my experience has been with this community, uh, I'd like to just go ahead and open the floor. Uh, so uh, please, the floor is yours. I guess I'm explicitly saying any comments on 4.2 Oh, Paul, you got something else? Let's go ahead. Yeah, while, while we're waiting uh, for the motors to charge in the audience to make a comment after lunch, uh, I was also going to add that uh, the presentations that we had just before lunch on water resources assessment, and in particular the one by the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland, indicated that we will, we will be as a commission in all likelihood having products that are coming online that will be pointing to you're entering a situation of drought or you are in a serious drought um, as well. So that there are other things that are complementary that the Commission is doing uh, that, that feeds into this process. So it's not, an, it's not just what is the IDMP doing, but the Commission is also undertaking activities that, that 
our, our contributions greatly to this effort. Yeah, thanks for that, Paul. So, comments? Yeah, I mean, I do appreciate drought is a dry subject. Uh, <laughs> okay, then what I... Okay, then, since, since I'm not seeing a lot of... Um, complaint or reaction from the floor, then I'm going to assume that, uh, that, that the members are pretty comfortable with what they're seeing in this document. And just with, uh, with the exception of this uh, paragraph 4.2, paren 2.4, are the members comfortable with, uh, with having that just deleted from the text? I see no objection. Oh, yes, please. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Desde nuestro punto de vista, la sequía, aunque está bastante bien recogida en, en, en temas de agricultura meteorológica, o sea, perdón, de meteorología agrícola, eh, nos falta el, el input, por lo menos a nivel de servicio hidrológico nacional. De hecho, por ejemplo, yo estoy en uno de los grupos de trabajo y todavía no he recibido ninguna información, por lo que nos gustaría que se tuviese también en cuenta la perspectiva hidrológica y el párrafo 4 no se eliminase y que al menos hubiese una mención a, a, a crear una comunidad de, de prácticas como se está haciendo en la, de, en la de inundaciones. Muchas gracias. Okay, thank you for that. I think, let, let me propose the following and see if this is good. We will not delete uh, 4.2 paren 2.4, uh, but we will add uh, in here a word, appropriate wording about a community of practice um, that, that reflects the, the, the issues that we feel uh, need to be represented. And, um, and then, but what I would like to do at this point, if everyone is comfortable with our doing that, I would like to go ahead and adopt this document uh, with the understanding that we will add um, appropriate wording to reflect uh, the comment that was made. Is that acceptable to everyone? Okay, Germany. Just a question for clarification. Would that include that? Um from a hydrological perspective, our interest is also in low flows, in hydrological drought specifically. Whereas the IDMP does not have just the hydrologic aspect, they have the meteorological and agricultural aspect, whereas from our perspective, we need to ensure that we have the hydrological aspect of drought included into this. And from that point, the Commission had done some valuable work in the past. I just remember, for example, the manual on low flow uh, estimation and, and other works that had been done in that respect. Thank, thank you, Wolfgang. I think in this regard, maybe, again, in the context of this particular paragraph, what we can do is we'll include wording that also um, expresses the, the desire of the Commission to see the advisory working group and, and the OPACHI um, work more to develop some, I don't know the words right now, but, but, but include the, work, the advisory working group and the Apache to, um, to prepare something that makes the, that ensures that we have the proper linkage in doing this and also gets the sense of the community of practice that was from the last intervention. Will that work? Okay. 
if the members are, are comfortable that we'll, we'll find the right wording for this, then I'd like to go ahead uh, and just adopt this document at this point. Uh, any objection to doing that? Okay, then we'll adopt document 4.2, parent 2, um, with the understanding that there'll be some additional text uh, on that paragraph. So, with that one gone, uh, we can move on to item um, 4.2, parent 3, which is hydrological and climate services. And uh, for this, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the Secretariat. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I have no presentation for you because I'm too lazy to produce presentations. So I will just walk you through the topic quickly. Um, maybe another short reflection before we go into the document. And I have said so in the opening, I think, already, but it is good to reiterate this here. The, the topic of the whole climate discussion and climate agenda and also the climate finances at the moment are influencing a lot on on hydrological services and on the hydrological debate I think and and as we are all aware climate matters really where it impacts water if it is just for a temperature that goes up and down half a degree or one or two it wouldn't really we wouldn't really mind the real question is about water so that, and I think that um, the climate community is starting to get a grip on that. And even though we are still struggling to understand a lot of climate issues, water becomes more and more prominent in the adaptation debate. And that is also why we have seen for the first time in the COP in Marrakesh a side event on hydroclimate services and on what that, that means for sustainable development and how we can uh, cope yeah, with future climate variability and change in terms of adaptive capacities. So it's an important topic and there is one um, development within WMO and that is reflected in the paragraph two of the document that um, describes hydroclimate services in the WMO. All the uh, water and climate things have been consolidated in one department. So all the global framework for climate services activities, the global climate observing system activities and climate data and management activities have all been put together in one department. So it's our department, it's our people. They are not here today, but um, we work side by side with them. And I think it gives us a better opportunity to integrate things better. For example, and that is the first paragraph of the document you are seeing, uh, that is about the GFCS user interface. So the global framework for climate services should provide users a better access and a better way to interact and communicate on what a hydroclimate service, for example, is, how they can provide it, how they can get it, and how they can use it. And I think when we discuss to integrate IDMP or APFM, the drought, drought and the flood help desks, this is just a sub-discussion of what we should be really considering as a integrated one-stop address or one address um, uh, access to, to help in the different climate-related um, <coughs> uh, products, services and and provisions we need to deal with. So um, that is about, this is described in the paragraph one and I think we are on the right track. We are designing a new um, user interface website for the GFCS at the moment and we can probably make sure that our different aspects that we are dealing with in different help desks and different communication channels at the moment are streamlined and are easier to access for all our members. Then the paragraph number three is about seasonal forecasting or extended hydrological prediction uh, as, as some um, people 
prefer to call it, and I would like to um, briefly ask Jan to give you an overview in three minutes about what we have been doing uh, in that regard. Okay, thank you very much, Johannes. Uh, just uh, very shortly, I introduced that already during the uh, uh, report of AWG member uh, in, the, in this field, uh, that there were two documents that were prepared during the intersessional period and were finalized, uh, uh, let's say, about a month ago and will enter uh, the uh, uh, review process to become WMO document. Uh, the first one is uh, the document on seasonal hydrological predictions. Uh, if you recall uh, uh, the resolution from the last CHY session, you would remember likely that uh, there was uh, uh, a call for develop uh, uh, information or document uh, on extended hydrological predictions uh, while uh, uh, looking at uh, this topic at the end we decided to, to, to uh, uh, use uh, uh, the name seasonal hydrological prediction as this is uh, the terminology used in technical regulation and uh, probably most commonly understood in, uh, in uh, 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 the community while uh, uh, the uh, uh, Extended hydrological prediction uh, increase the discussion. What is this? Uh, uh, what, what a definition of extended hydrological prediction is. So, so we just leave it like that. But be sure that the document covers the issues from sub-seasonal to seasonal to interannual uh, issues. I don't want to go through through the document. Uh, I will only show you that. Uh, Given the table of contents, uh, we try to uh, introduce general concept, uh, uh, describe uh, key considerations for developing of seasonal hydrological prediction systems, uh, of course, reflect user need, uh, users and their needs, and then we have, uh, of course, the substantive uh, session on methodology, uh, data needed, forecast verification, and operational system and delivery setup. So these documents uh, are, uh, uh, this document uh, is, is ready to enter uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the review process. We already have a couple of responses from responses from Apache members uh, expressing their intentions to contribute in this review. Uh, so hopefully that will be uh, uh, done within a couple of months and will be available uh, to you. The other document uh, uh, with the same level of uh, development, so we are in, a, in, a, in a absolutely the same stage of development, is a document on uh, uh, use of, uh, okay, so there's a prob some problem on the, with that, sorry. Uh, but it exists and it will be most likely down, uh, uh, uploaded to information <laughs> session. Uh, the other one deals with use of hydrologic, uh, of uh, 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 global and regional climate models uh, outputs in hydrology and has a, a, a very detailed and very scientifically uh, uh, detailed uh, section on downscaling methods uh, and their uh, potential use in hydrology, including uh, other deficiencies and advantages of uh, different uh, methodologies. It also has a section on uh, 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 the interpretation and uh, a presentation of uh, results of uh, impact studies, hydrologic impact studies. So these, this document, again, will be put into the uh, official review process uh, quite soon after the session. Okay, thanks a lot, Jan. The other um, topic that is uh, included in the paragraph number three is the ARCOF, and the ARCOF is a regional climate outlook forum. And some of you might have had first contacts with ARCOFs. Mm, the regional climate outlook forum is a forum that intends to bring together uh, met and climate people to, uh, to create a joint evaluation 
of a current and near future development in terms of weather and climate. It is not yet a um, um, objective forecast support or decision support tool. It's a, it's a subjective exercise where people meet and try to get onto the same page to um, also maybe create more coherent regional responses or preparedness activities in terms of, uh, of imminent climate. And I know that some of you, um, I, I, and I know from other people who are not in the room, that sometimes ARCOVs are maybe not yet really focused on what a water manager <coughs> or uh, a, an agro uh, manager needs to, to really operate. So the scale might be wrong, uh, it's maybe just um, there's too much bias in it or too much heuristics. And at this moment, in WMO, the ARCOVs are being revised. So there's a process in CCL, in the climate community, to revise all the, that way that the regional climate outlook fora operate. And one of the goals of those fora is to really create, with the GDPFS and the different centers, a um, community and a mechanism that provides more objective decision support. So continuously running models, maybe uh, even ensemble uh, things that people can evaluate. And I think it is important for the hydrological community to tell the climate people now what is really needed, what, what do you, what do we want to have out of an ARCOF regional climate outlook forum process in terms of really applicable things that you, that you want to have for your own purpose. I think that is not yet very clear to some people who normally organize and run um, those climate outlook fora. So here is something for you to consider. You should really think about if you want to organize within an Apache community or a web space we can create for you or a small group of people that somebody might want to uh, lead and guide um, a, an activity that impacts on the future design of those archives. And it, but this can also be discussed in the future work program. We don't need to necessarily include it in this document here. But it is a question for you, I think, you should consider. <clears throat> and then the last paragraph is on um, the joint expert group of the CCL, the Commission for AGMAT and the CHY. So we had a joint expert group on climate, food and water, and it was established, I don't know, six years ago or so. <coughs> And I, I don't even have such a long memory to remember when it was actually really <laughs> implemented. But I know that Jan, who sits here, has been in that meeting that we refer to. It was in November 2013. And ever since, we are designing the layout of a very small leaflet that should describe what this effort is all about. So. To say, well, to say in diplomatic words, I'm not so very much convinced by our blasting success in getting the topic across. And if we are not able to do that, we should maybe just disengage from this activity. Because if things don't work, we should also have the courage to say, okay, it doesn't work, let's just stop it. But this is something that the Commission might want to decide and not one single person with a single personal attitude or view should, uh, should do or not do. So in, I think um, in this last paragraph you should now indicate whether you would want to discontinue this effort or, um, or if somebody, any volunteer is really keen on giving this a new drive together with Jan and others. We could also uh, have a new volunteer here for this activity. If I may, a reaction to the, to the last uh, paragraph. 
I think that since uh, uh, the group was established, uh, there were many changes in, in WMO structure, programs, and activities, and some of them really replaced the original intention and original uh, 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 work of this of this uh, group. So, so maybe now the activities are uh, covered uh, across uh, all the technical commissions, but not through this group. Okay, Dr. Linz, with that, I would close my short intervention on this document and you might want to consider to open the floor. The floor is open. Wolfgang. Thank you. Let me just take you back to the paragraph 4.2, bracket 3.3, .3, last sentence. The Commission invited ARCOV's organizers to continue and strengthen the dialogue with the hydrologic community. Now, from what was just said, um, in my view, it should be the other way around. If the Commission finds a way to express itself, to say to the uh, um, ARCOV organizers uh, what we actually need, then the process would be active from our side rather than waiting from the ARCOVs to uh, um, take up a dialogue with the hydrological community and they don't know actually what the hydrological community has to offer. So in this case, um, maybe it may, might be worthwhile to change the sentence in such a way that the initiative is on the CHY to approach the arc of organizers and then come into a focused dialogue rather than waiting the other way around. Yeah, thanks Wolfgang. Um, that's a point well taken. We can just add the last sentence or modify the last sentence in terms of the commission invited arc of organizers and Apache members to continue and strengthen the dialogue between the hydrology, hydrological and climatological communities that and so forth. So if you agree, we will modify this last sentence, but would maybe not go to a draft for that purpose, but that's something that Harry should clarify here. Other comments? Uh, Czech Republic. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We would like to add some requests, uh, paragraph into some of the resolutions relating to these topics or topic. Uh, I would like to read its whole paragraph, as a whole paragraph. Request the president of the Commission of AWG to support the development of capabilities of NHS in the field of sub-seasonal and to seasonal to interannual hydrological forecasting for hydrological and water resources management applications and a hydrological contribution to GFCS and enhancement of relevance and usability of RCOFs, products and services. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, just a point of clarification. Is this something that you see being part of the text that we're talking about here, or is this something that may be in the text of another document uh, or in the resolution that could be included? Uh, thank you again. It should be included in some resolution relating to this, and you can discuss it uh, more closely, uh, more detailed, uh, in more detailed way with Jan Danielka, who wanted to include it. Thanks. What I would like to suggest then at this point is uh, tomorrow morning at 8.30 when uh, this group gets together uh, with uh, the UK and, uh, and Bruce Stewart uh, to discuss that document, that it, maybe that's the place to go because it, it seems like that would be an appropriate entry point for this. Thank you. Other comments? Yes, Japan. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I think the, <coughs> the potential of the joint, the expert group on the climate, food, and the water is now the very, very important. The, the, as I mentioned the, on the first day, the uh, sustainable development goals, the, including the poverty, food, energy, 
in uh, uh, the climate, water, uh, closely related to our activity. And uh, this, uh, the role of the, this kind of the joint expert group is uh, now is a very become much more important. I think the the Commission uh, should accelerate, activate uh, this uh, joint committee for addressing the uh, the uh, climate, food, water issue and uh, contribute to the SDG. Thank you. <clears throat> Would you have some text to offer to complete that sentence? Thank you. I will send. Other interventions? Okay, uh, let me just recap here. It looks like we have a request for some rewording, slight rewording on um, paragraph three and for some additional words to come into paragraph four. And these are just gonna be brief. Um, and so what I'd like to do here uh, with your permission is to suggest that we adopt this document at this point, having heard the interventions for these minor changes, additions, um, if we can adopt this document now uh, and then have these, w with the understanding that, that these additions will be made is that acceptable to, to the members? Okay, seeing no objection, this document is adopted. Okay, we're having screams for coffee breaks. So if, um, let's take a break for 10 minutes, 15 minutes? 15 minutes, thank you. I'm sorry, we, we'll reconvene in 15 minutes and we're gonna pick up the first item for Saturday morning capacity building. So that's where, that's where we'll start when we come back this afternoon. Sorry. <laughs>